Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Researchers who investigate sightings of ghosts and apparitions often find that the site of the haunting has a mysterious, sometimes brutal, past. When one of our viewers called to report bizarre ghost activity in her house, our first step was to look into the history of the house, and we did find that it had been a place of misery and torment. The evil began in 1984 in a small town in central Maryland. It's the kind of town that seems to promise the American dream. But two brothers were living a nightmare in one house in this quiet town. For a long time, it was their secret. But the day the boys, age four and six, told their mother, she told the police. What happened in this house to those two children uh, is an absolute nightmare. The children were raped and molested repeatedly. They weren't safe uh, because of the danger that lived within, and that danger lied uh, in, in their own father. He was convicted of sexual child abuse, but the boys insisted they were not the only victims. They described the brutal rape and murder of an infant. I don't think it's far-fetched to believe that a baby could be uh, stabbed repeatedly, uh, dismembered, and then decapitated, and then uh, literally tossed into a creek. And of course, that's what we believe happened in this particular circumstance. The police found no proof of murder. The father served just 18 months in prison. The house, with its monstrous memories, was sold to another family. Just six weeks after moving in, the new owner died suddenly, leaving his wife and three daughters alone in a house they now believe is haunted by an entity they call the Beast. This beast has molested, raped, choked. He's touched, he's punched, he's scratched and I just feel like it's getting stronger. The first time something had happened to me, I was laying in my bed and I woke up for no reason. And I heard this breathing and I could feel it in my ear. It was like <gasps> <sighs> He said in a real deep voice, he was like, make love to me. It was pinching my breasts very hard and it just squeezed me on my behind. It was like I was being sexually assaulted by it. Like it was taking itself and entering into my body. The family fled the house and called sightings for help. They sent this video, a record of the night the so-called beast scratched the 13-year-old daughter. First it scratched me on this side of my face and it hurt too bad. Then it scratched me on this side of my face and it actually broke the skin down here and it was bleeding. And I was just crying hysterical. And it was saying, your family can pay its respects now because you're mine. And it was saying, you can run, but you can't hide. The family refused to return to the house alone. Sightings agreed to send a team of ghost experts from the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. When we go into a home to investigate, we look at, first and foremost, the environmental factors that are contributing to the situation. We look at the physiological elements and we look at the psychological elements of all those in the family. Specialists descended on the house, armed with technology. Their aim was to electronically document any appearance by the supposed beast. We call it a beast because of the size of it. I remember I looked up and I could see it and it was, it was just huge. I was not imagining it, I was not sleeping. It was very, very real to me. And then I felt the tongue, there was a very pointed tongue. The thing pushed me back on the bed. And when it did, I felt this extreme weight on me. It started screaming at me, very raspy, very deep voice. And it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it just kept doing it and doing it. And of course, at this point, I'm screaming. I was laying in the bed next to her and her body, it was like, her heels were on the bed and her head and shoulders were on the bed but the rest of her body was arched up like a bridge i know without a doubt that it was trying to have sex with me and it was trying to me and i was just powerless there was just nothing i could do it is terrifying it's not something to sit around the kitchen table and say oh haha ha, the ghost was calling my name last night or the ghost wanted to have sex with me last night isn't that funny it's not funny at all because of the women's terror we had a security firm install 24-hour surveillance cameras throughout the house 
Investigative devices were also put in place for the night-long vigil. The team prepared to monitor the environment, radioactivity, changes in light and electromagnetism, and the temperature, sound frequencies, and gravitational forces within the house. The neighborhood was also scoured for evidence of unusual levels of pollution or energy from power lines, something to scientifically explain the phenomenon that plagues this family. I've seen a tall man, very skinny, long arms. It was just like a flash of light, and it was so fast, and it just, it was at the end of the bed, and that just, like, you know, startled me. Just like, just like, did a belly flop right on me. And I was like, stuck in this position, and I couldn't move, and I was like, Mom, Mom, but I could not get my voice out. I was like, Mom, Mom. It was like pins and needles, but it was coming from the inside out instead of the outside in. It came off me, and I just felt like my whole body just lifted right off the bed, and I fell down. It was very frightening. The first night back in the house, the family crowded into one bedroom and refused to turn out the light. Okay, oh, let's lay down. Good night. Good night. Everyone say their prayers. They tossed and turned, five in one bed, four other bedrooms empty. Your feet are freezing. Mom. Would you shut up? This is the most aggravating time. Shh. Let's rest. After midnight, one daughter came into the living room for a cigarette. It's about two o'clock in the morning. And this usually seems to be the time when it'll start building up and you'll start hearing sounds in the house if anything's going to happen and by three is usually when it gets to the peak. If everybody's sleeping and the house is quiet, that's when it seems like it's the strongest. I feel like it's here and I wish if it was, it would just show itself or do something. The night passed without incident. Day two brought more tests. Psychiatrist Elizabeth Targ worked with the family. It feels like your heart is beating like very hard against your chest. I feel like I can't breathe. I felt like I was dying. <laughs> Technician John Pori conducted physiological tests. The family agreed to sleep that night with the lights out, heads wired to measure sleep patterns and dreams. Our camera was equipped with a night lens to photograph the house in darkness. Christopher Chacon monitored the sensing equipment. This was one night the women wanted something to happen, but again, the house was silent. Everything that we saw in the house on Utah Road and everything that's been told to us by the family members could be rationally explained in one way or another according to the laws of nature and physics. I still feel as strongly as we did in the first interview that those things happen in reality. They actually did happen and they happen the way that I explained them. It's the eternal question for paranormal investigators. If nothing happens, is it all a hoax? Or is the terror the family calls the beast lurking in the background, waiting for the investigators to leave before it will return? I still feel there's a lot of evil in this house. I think that it's the devil personally, and I don't think it's finished. The inability to catch a ghost on tape has proven to be the ultimate frustration for investigators like Christopher Chacon. They continue to work on new, less obtrusive methods of studying ghosts and haunting phenomena. On a recent edition of Sightings, we sent our investigative team to Maryland to help a family plagued by what they believed was a ghost. Although no apparition showed itself to our team, the family continues to be concerned about what they call the beast. So paranormal investigator Peter James has agreed to work with the family on a psychic level. During our initial investigation, the family revealed they were being assaulted by an entity in their house. In the weeks since our team left the site, the ghostly activity has continued unabated. It's been a very active period since they've been gone. They've been gone a couple of weeks and the scratching has started again. Uh, my youngest daughter has been scratched really badly. After seeing a sightings episode featuring psychic Peter James, the family thought they'd finally found someone who could help. We just felt like that's the guy that we need. Somebody who can come in here, identify what it is, and deal with it, and send it on its way. After a brief walk through the house, Peter James felt he was dealing with more than one entity. I would say there are about six ghosts in this house. Six entities. I feel we have a forceful entity who is the mainstay who is the ringleader, so to speak. It wants to gain more control. It wants to maintain control. And my being a fighter of sorts uh, with this sort of activity, uh, I feel that I'll, I'll clean house. 
Heater then conducted a more thorough inspection of the site to identify paranormal hotspots. Hello? 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 I'm getting a, a um, <coughs> name <coughs> that I believe um, dwells in this area or certainly within this structure and I get a name of Philip. I also receive a name of Patrick. I am, I am rather saddened by the vibrations that are here. I, I feel a lot of sadness tonight, but this is truly one of the, um, one of the hearts of, of the house. The family confirmed that the laundry room and the basement were two areas where particularly bizarre events had occurred. Peter was also drawn to an upstairs bedroom. I am also picking up a female uh, entity who is loving and that is peaceful that I believe that dwells here uh, not in this room necessarily but throughout and I get the name of Rebecca and she is with a child and I believe it is a boy child and the child answers to the name of Thomas or Tommy next Peter attempted to contact the entity directly and rid the house of its presence I am receiving a name that from this forceful entity that begins with a D and I believe this entity's name is Daniel ah uh -huh. Daniel I am in control here you are no longer welcome here your energy is beginning to weaken now be gone now after Peter James investigation the spirit activity in the house stopped. Sightings then conducted a search of area land deeds and real estate records and found a startling document. Peter James, who had never even been to Maryland, had correctly identified the name of the original landowner, a former police chief in the area, whose first name was Daniel. Peter believes Daniel's spirit is the beast that terrorizes the family. He is continuing to stake his claim to this property. He believes that this house is his and this land is his and they're invading his possession. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.